Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here for checking out the uh, series. Please do hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all the interviews that I put out every single week. Three brand new interviews every single week. A new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Makes it a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover those new ones. You can grab us uh, anywhere you get your podcast from. Spotify, Apple Podcast, NPR, WFPK.org, Consequence, or of course right here on YouTube for the video versions. Anywhere you get your podcast from, you can subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. And that's me, Kyle Meredith. Today we're talking the movie The Hitman, out now on Netflix with uh, Adria Ajorna. Uh, she stars alongside Glenn Powell. Richard Linklater directed the film. Uh, here's the log line. Inspired by an unbelievable true story, a straight-laced professor, professor discovers his hidden talent as a fake hitman. He meets his match in a client who steals his hearts and ignites a powder keg of deception, delight, and mixed-up identities. Uh, we're going to be talking with uh, Adria about, um, about her character. She comes in as a bit of a mystery. She comes in as one of the people hiring Glenn Powell's character, to kill someone and i won't give away too much about that of course there's uh some romance that ensues uh, i want to hear about this character i want to hear about her chemistry with glenn i want to hear about working with richard link ladder uh we're also going to talk about some of her other projects you also know her as a uh, big Scalin in andor the star wars series she's also in blink twice that's coming out uh, that's directed by uh, zoe kravitz she was just recently in the absence of Eden. Tom Waits was in the movie. I don't think they were in the movie together, but we'll talk about that as well. Uh, let's get into this. We're discussing The Hitman out now on Netflix. It's Kyle Meredith with uh, Adria Ajorna. Hi. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you on here. Congrats on The Hitman. A wonderfully funny movie. Uh, <laughs> one of the best things I've seen lately. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, it is such a fun movie. Um, of course, when you come onto the screen... You are this mystery amongst many other people, although we know from the previews that you are the the interest. But uh, but you're this mystery that we very quickly are asking, is she crazy? <laughs> <laughs> like, how did you want to play? Is it Maddie? Was that the character's name? Maddie, Madison. Right? Madison, right. How did you want to play her? Because because for a long time, I think that's my central question is like, is she crazy or is she just in love? Or she's crazy in love, like Beyonce says. Um <laughs> I, I, I don't think she I, I don't really think she's crazy. You know, I think what fascinated me about Madison is the her fascination with reinventing herself. And I think we do that all the time. You know, you talk different when you're on the phone with your mom than you're with your best buddy, you know, or when you're on a first date. I think that was kind of where we jump started it was like first dates are the biggest lies in the world. Um, so no, I don't think she's crazy. I think she's in constant reinvention of herself and, and she's, you know, she's creating her idea of what a femme fatale is and who a femme fatale is for her and for Ron. And I think that's why we see her shift so many times in the movie, um, is because she's constantly, what is he like? What is he like? And we kind of do that, not to the extreme that she does it, of course, but I think coming from a sort of oppressed relationship, I just really wanted her to blossom after that diner scene and feel free and unexpected. And it was really, a, you know, we worked really hard at creating that dynamic between the three of us. Yeah. But and you did it so well because because even throughout it and you're right, you get to a point where suddenly I'm I've bought in to these people, <laughs> regardless of what they're doing. But for a long time, it's can can who can be trusted, you know, and and watching both you and Gary slash Ron playing with these characters and playing with these new identities, you know, I come back to the question, you know, of, of course, we all want to become something and maybe we will ourselves to do that. Were we always that person? Was that always inside us or are you able just to clean slate it? Like, what's your opinion, I guess, is what I'm asking on that. Oof. No, I think it kind of stays with you a little bit or those lessons sort of stay with you. I don't I don't really. Yeah, I think I think you can't quite press a race and delete. I think it, it still sort of 
lingers with you until hopefully one day it doesn't. But I, I, I think it, I think it'll be with you forever. Yeah. Well, I, I will say as, as far as some of those lines, when you do say, do I scare you? That's everything to me that, that one moment that's <laughs> like, I held on to that. Your chemistry with Glenn is also so good in this. Is that, I mean, is that just total professionalism? Is that something you work on on the front end? Like, how do you all arrive to being um, that good in that moment? Rick, Rick has a really good explanation. He goes, you can't create chemistry. Either you have it or you don't. Um, and, I, and I think he's right. Rick is usually right. Um, I think Glenn and I, from the second we met, you know, we just, we share so much in common that it was like instant, we're like, oh, I can spend three months with you filming a movie. I can, we could become friends. Like it was, it just felt really comfortable really quickly. Um, and, at, you know, when I first read the script, there wasn't that many steamy, sexy, that sexy element wasn't that um, prominent in the script. And I think during rehearsals and when creating this dynamic, I was very much, you know, in the writer's room sort of giving my input on on Madison. And when creating this dynamic, it just felt necessary. Um, so Glenn and I would come up with all these different references. Um, I, I came in with like a mood board of things that I found really beautiful and, and sensual. There was all these photo uh, all these pictures from famous photographers and and all these pieces of artwork and sculptures that I was like, oh, this silhouette is really beautiful. Or there was one with like a stocking and that's kind of the scene of the sock where he's pulling my sock. And there was another one where there was a gentleman behind this woman and it was this beautiful photograph in Italy. And he like sp had spilled some wine and we're like, oh, that could be really interesting to sort of bring that image to life. So I think it allowed us to have a lot of fun and have all of these conversations because we were we had all these references that we were bringing into a 3d format um and we were you know in the writer's room we were writing all these scenes and we sort of forgot for seconds that we're like oh we're the ones that had to perform this <laughs> so when the day came we were both looked at each other like wow we really did this to ourselves you know, right. usually there's writers or directors that are like, oh, you have to do this sex scene and, and the actress is the one going, oh, I don't know if I want to or or is it necessary? In this case, it was the two actors really going like, oh, we really want to share their passion because that passion and their love is pivotal to the plot. It makes you really believe in them and want to sort of go on this ride with them. Um, and it was so fun. It was so fun to write them and come up with them. It was It was so cool. I love the idea of that mood board. You'd mentioned Beyonce a minute ago, and that was my first thought because it's like every album that she does, every specific moment is sort of in reference to a piece of art or something like like have you worked like that before? Do you do you like to work with sort of that? Yeah, I I, I do actually. I, I really enjoy it. I always when I'm prepping for a role, I'll go to a museum and I'll pick one painting or or sculpture or whatever it might be, and that energy that is there, I'm like, ooh, that's you know it's reminiscing of something and it. I don't know, it just, whatever inspires me then kind of just takes me on a spiral, whether it's a song or, or, or a, a piece of art, it kind of just takes me in a completely different train of thought. And then I get little surprises of like who this character will, will be. I know it's, it's a little weird, but I don't oh, I know. Either either I go with the you know with art or with people. I I steal so much from friends and family members, uh, or even strangers in the street. <laughs> Only because you said song, and I hate to put you on the spot, but uh, do you think Madison has a theme song? Ooh, I do. Ha I do have a playlist for her. I always make a playlist for my characters, but a theme song? No, I think she's a five second kind of song. You know, she's like so sporadic. Um, I, I don't know if Madison could be an entire song. She's one of those, let me play this for you and gives you a few seconds. Uh -huh. Like, no, 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 go to the no, next no. one. And now I don't want to give it to you anymore. And let me play it. And no, like she's a give and take for sure. <laughs> yeah. Chris, you mentioned uh, uh, Link Ladder. Um, I, I would love to hear about, you know, your take of being directed by him. You know, he's got his own style. I mean, he's been doing this for, you know, 30 years. I, I love the way that he always sort of works in ways to ask bigger questions, even 
when we've got this fun semi-true story comedy going on, like there's a lot of bigger questions that's being talked about, some that we've already mentioned about identification, you know, and and, and how you do. But but what was your what was your relationship and experience working with him? Matt, he's he's ruined a lot for me, that man, um, because it, it, the way that he works is just so it's so cool. And I just wish more people would work like like that. You know, he comes from a place of no ego. He's one of my personal favorite directors. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in one of his movies. I, I genuinely his movies have I've always aspired to be an actress like an actress in a uh, Richard Linklater's movie. I've always been like, oh, I want to act like that. I want to have a performance like that. Um, so when working with him, it was funny because I was like, oh, he must love improv because everything feels so fresh. And like these characters are saying things for the first time. And I told him, I was like, I, I just wanted to say the right thing on our first Zoom. And I was like, I love improv. I can, and he's like, I hate it. I was like, oh man, I really messed that one up. Um, and I thought, thought that you know I needed freedom and I needed things to be said for the first time when I was performing so I wouldn't I would do a lot of work but memorize my lines the night before I had to film them so they would still be fresh and he's changed that completely for me with Rick you rehearse he makes you a part of the process so you're sort of writing the script with him they obviously wrote the script structured the script but he allows you to have such a big input in the creation of your character um, that it's just it's it's just not it's just not that common. And you rehearse it for two weeks every single day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We would run these lines, these jokes, over and over again. I was so scared that things wouldn't be funny. And he's like, "No, because people are hearing it for the first time." And he really taught me that you find the freedom on set. And it's really liberating to rehearse so much, to prep so much, and to get to a set and have no doubts and have made choices with very clear intentions. All of a sudden, between action and cut, you feel so free. So you're like, because you're so comfortable in the material that so much magic starts sort of happening. Um, so yeah, he's definitely shifted the way that I work now. Um, and And... I just feel so much more confident after working with him because there's no doubt, you know what you're getting. You, you, you have very clear intentions of what sort of each scene is going to become. No, I love that. It's like hearing, you know, before sunrise that everything was meticulously rehearsed, that none of that was improv. And it's just kind of, none of that was when he told me that my mind was blown. It makes me respect those actors even more it makes me respect Rick even more. I'm like, I, I need the world to know how precise Rick is when he directs. Right. Yeah, it is incredible. Uh, and, and I'll just quickly say, seeing that you have so much happening right now, all at once, it feels like all at once. I mean, because the absence of Eden, uh, you just did that one, right? And yeah. did you get, did you get to act with Tom Waits? And I saw he was on there as I well. I didn't. I oh. didn't. No, <laughs> I didn't. I, I, I was on set. I think we crossed. I didn't see him. I would have freaked mm -hmm. out. I'm a huge Tom Waits fan. Um, but he, I think, got to set a day after or a day before I left or something like that. Um, so I just missed him. Missed opportunity there. But of course, Andor and Blink twice. I cannot wait to see that. When it's that kind of cast, because you go from sort of the smaller movie here with the Hitman to something like that. Does How does that change the experience for you uh, as an actor? Um, It doesn't really. I mean, I think you still hone in on, on the the process and your and your character I think when you're doing an ensemble you know you sort of need to know where your piece of the puzzle is and once you know that then you're kind of good to good to go um and ensemble pieces are so fun you know and there's it's less pressure as well because the the plot you're not driving this plot as you know as precisely as in a movie like like hitman you know, you 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 get to be supportive of each other, whether it is a scene that is pivotal to the movie or not. You kind of it's a really supporting and collaborative process. So I think I think both of them I, I really I really enjoyed. I've been in a lot of ensembles now that I think about it.
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm looking forward. That movie looks wild. Link twice. And of course, Andor, everybody's excited to see. Uh, wait for season two. Go. Yeah. I, I saw that quote where you said a uh, 10 times more complex than what people imagine. That's, uh, yeah, that's a think, nice tease right I mean, there. Tony is just if you if you think you know what Tony is going to write, you're wrong. Like it is so much more complex than what people can imagine. It was he took me by surprise and I had all these predictions of where Bix was going to go or where the storyline was going to go. And I was I was so wrong. Yes, we'll all find out soon. Uh, congrats on the Hitman again. It is such a fun movie. I so enjoy watching it. And thank you so much for taking the time to talk about well, it. Thank you. This was so fun. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.